welcome, buddy. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's just awesome to see you. Good to uh, welcome back. And uh, you travel more than I do, I think, or as much. So where you been? Yeah, uh, I've been on tour for the past few months. Uh, I'm doing a tour for a company called Tab Tour. Uh, they're our sponsor this year, and. I visit schools, that's what I do. I do a couple schools a day, I meet about a thousand kids every day, and we're trying to make math fun and get kids excited about numbers, and we do teacher workshops, family math nights, I do corporate events, and uh, the last month alone, I've been in uh, San Diego for a week, LA for a week, San Francisco for a week, Las Vegas for a week, Phoenix Mesa for a week, and I, next week I'm back up north in California somewhere. So every week it's somewhere else, and I, I get invited to go all around the world. It's a dream come true, but it's really awesome to come back here. And the fact that my buddy hosts this is even cooler. Uh, and Sally and uh, the whole Mesa team. Look at picture there. Uh, what did you, oh, yeah. We were just at Alice Cooper's golf tournament. Uh, last weekend, and uh, Sally and I saw each other there. And uh, Alice's Solid Rock Foundation raised, uh, I think, two hundred thousand dollars in one night for his teen outreach. And uh, Sally, that was really cool of you to be there. It's a big deal. You know how much it means to everybody. And it's great to be here. And I get to do all these TV shows and all that stuff. But um, uh, it's really special to come back here. And it always hits me when I drive into this zip code. Something happens because, uh, for those of you who don't don't know, I, I was in the United States Air Force for six years and. When I got out of the Air Force, I flew here to, to Arizona, and my first sponsor was a reading company here in Mesa, and I, I got a little apartment on Country Club, and I had to walk Country Club across the freeway every day to get to my sponsor, and so that walk, that mile walk, uh, when I drove it today, I just sort of laughed, you know, just all the things I had to go through. So it's really sentimental to be back here in Mesa because this is my ground zero. This is where I started. And um, now I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records and I, I have a TV show coming out and I'm a best-selling author and I get to speak around the world. And when I come back to Mesa, it just reminds me, walking down that street all the time thinking, how am I gonna do this? What am I gonna do? And, and now to be where I am, it, it gives me so much uh, gratitude, an attitude of gratitude to come back here. That's awesome. Well, you know, I know that the highlight, you've been on Oprah, Regis Philbin, and all those shows, but truly, Scott has told me, the highlight uh, has been being on Mesa Morning Live. Nothing even second place, second, nothing. nothing. And I, I just want to remind you if, you, if you don't remember, maybe maybe you see Mark too much, but this is the funniest guy in Arizona. I see him oh. doing stuff all over the place. He's amazing. Uh, oh. and, Okay. I've, been, I've been seeing his show for 20 years. He's been watching my show for 25 years, I think. And um, I still laugh every time I see his show. He's <laughs> at all the golf tournaments. He does all these different things. And that's what I'm all about is when I come back here, I donate my time to schools. Uh, I, I, I've been doing it for 27 years now. We've seen almost 2 million students in person, live through, this, uh, through these um, programs. And it's great to have a God-given ability, but to find a way to use it to help other people is really where um, I, I think it's changed my life tremendously. And uh, I, I'm working on a documentary, and uh, something I learned about myself, you know, we have, all have patterns in our life. And there was a pattern for me where when I started in 88, 89, and for the first 10 years or so, it was all about me. And look at what I can do. Look at my mental abilities. Look at what I can do. It was all about me. And uh, uh, in 98, um, everything changed. And I, instead of being w about me, I wanted to see what I, can I do to help others. And that revolutionized my show, uh, my products, my relationships with everybody that I was working with. And all of a sudden, the floodgates opened up. And so just by asking myself a better question about my own business and saying, what can I do to help others instead of what can I do to promote me, me, me? And all of a sudden, everything changes, and now all these opportunities abound for me around the world. So, you know, I'm just really grateful. Cool. Well, instead of me interviewing you, because we're on limited time, I just want you to treat this audience like it's a, it's, it's the Human Calculator show. <laughs> just have a little bit of fun with them and get them a, okay, you hold this dinner, officially right, blow their mind. Well, if you don't mind running the calculator for me. Right, you, um, you've seen me. I don't even know how to make Yeah, it was pretty ugly, one. but... Um, uh, <laughs> It'd be cool if we had a rocket scientist no, that could no, do that's this. that's too much pressure. <laughs> I'm getting rid of my TV today, but no. um, uh, 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 ever since I was a kid, I had a gift for numbers, and uh, some teachers were open to it, some teachers weren't, but I had a couple rough years where teachers were just like, hey, I don't care how you're getting the answer, you got to do it my way. And in fifth grade, I had a teacher, Mr. Michael Potter, and he goes, I've already heard about you. If you figure something out, you tell me, and I'll see if it works algebraically, and if it works, 
I'll let you teach it to the rest of the class. And so from fifth grade on, I was teaching teachers and teaching other students <laughs> how to do math better mentally, just because I could figure out the best patterns, the best, yeah, it's a little tricky, but you gotta be careful there. It'll go, man, no, you gotta be a, you gotta be a, a scientist yeah. of some kind to get that in there. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, forget it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> let's try it one more time. So. Uh, when I was a kid, my teachers would question me about how, where I was coming up with these answers. And I found all these shortcuts and patterns to numbers. It'll come up in a second there. And um, by sixth grade, I was actually figuring out easier ways to get the answer in math. And so that's what I would do for years. And I took it for granted, to be honest with you. I thought all adults could do mental math. I thought I was just the fastest kid in the school. It's about sixth grade, fifth, sixth grade is when I realized that Adults can't do this stuff either. Hmm. And so that's when it hit me that, you know, I've got something special here. So uh, I, I can do all these mental calculations, add, subtract, multiply, divide, square roots, cube roots, and all those things. But today, since we're on limited time, I just want to show you my Guinness World Record. Uh, and before math class one day, my buddy had a calculator, and he punched in 5 plus 5. Yeah, Did it come up? you got it. Okay. And now hit equals, and it says 10. But he accidentally hit equals again, and watch what happens. It says 15. Now keep hitting equals, Mark, show them that'll count. It's called a constant. And my buddy goes, hey, you're good at numbers and addition and stuff, but can you do this? The calculator just keeps counting by a number. And, I was, and as soon as I asked my brain that question, it was like something woke up. So clear the calculator. Uh, I'll do it for you, buddy. I, I know how you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, right, right in the front row, please pick a two-digit number you'd like me to count by. All right, that's pretty easy, but we'll try it. <laughs> All right, so 39 plus 39 equals. Okay, and I'm just going to start counting by that number, and you just hit equals each time I say the next answer, all right? So you should have 78, 117, 156, 195, 234, 273, 312, 351, 390, 429, 468, 507, 546, 585, 624, 663, 702, 741, 780, 819, 858, 897, 936, yada, 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 like that. So, oh, good job, Mark. He's right there with me. All right. So uh, you were yeah, ahead of me the whole time. The whole time. All right. <laughs> And my Guinness World Record now is uh, 36 answers in 15 seconds. So they found the fastest accountant in the world to race me, which is not Mark. And, uh, and they had 15 seconds. The judge chose the number 38. So I had to add 38 over and over again in my head out loud, racing this guy in a calculator. And at the end of the 15 seconds, he had 28 answers and I had 35. So I've broken that record since then. It's now at 36 and 15 seconds. So clear the calculator. And let's do this one. I'll do full speed, just so you can see what it's like when I'm going full speed. Would you pick a two-digit number for me? 23. 23, all right. So 23 plus 23 equals. And this time we're going to go fast. You ready? All right, okay. 46, 69, 92, 115, 138, 161, 184, 207, 230, 253, 276, 293, 223, 453, 683, 914, 144, 374, 604, 83. Oh, good job, Mark. 782, Go ahead, yeah, 8285, 8, 8, 8, well, you're very fast on that thing there, okay. So, uh, on, the, on the world record, they had to punch all the numbers in. Mark's just sitting equal, so that's why he looks so brilliant right now. Yeah. But, uh, uh, <laughs> trust me, uh, trust me, I don't. <laughs> and, um, and so, this Guinness World Record has gotten me invited to all these things around the world. So, it's a true blessing that uh, it's cool to have a gift, but to be able to, uh, quantify what it is and to set a world record. And now I have people all over the world trying to break this record. And I've been invited to, uh, and performed at Oprah Winfrey School in South Africa for, for her girls' school. Uh, President Obama's uh, daughter's school in Washington, D.C. Schools all over Europe, Australia, Canada, everywhere. It's just a dream come true. And when I come back here to Arizona, we spent a couple weeks to kick off the tour. And it just feels great to come back here because um, I had my discovery about numbers uh, when I decided to change my show from about me to um, others, all these things started happening to me. And I'm just going to show you this one thing that happened. Uh, I was playing golf with Alice Cooper, our mutual friend, and um, something happened on the 18th hole one day. He said, hey, 18, 1 plus 8 is 9. Today's 9, 9, 99. How come 18 adds up to 9? And it got me thinking about numbers are really 0 through 9 instead of 1 through 10. We teach our kids, and I, I have to tell everybody I meet this, but we're all wired to think about numbers like this. You know, we have 10 fingers, and we all go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's not right. It's cool if you've got to count your fingers, but it's not the way numbers work. Numbers are really 0 through 9. And if you look at that painting up there, you'll see it's just all zeros through 9s. Focus on 
uh, the red digits and just look at how it goes zero through nine across the screen over and over again. There's no 10. 10 is a two digit number. So I teach kids to think like a calculator because when you turn on a calculator, it starts at zero. So we have 10 fingers, 10 digits. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's really zero through nine. So in 98, 99, I started asking, why are we doing it this way? And so look at, I'm just gonna show you a couple patterns here, but I, I put these numbers down and I saw this number grid that goes from double zero to 99. And I grabbed 10 crayons and I, was, I, was, I just saw patterns. So I started coloring. I said, all right, look for all the zeros. Now look for all the ones. Look for all the twos. And what pattern do you start to see here? A plus sign or a cross. Every number revealed a cross to me, and that really freaked me out. And so I kept digging, and I found more and more patterns. So I've created this coloring book. It's called The Human Calculator Matrix, and it's a number grid. It's a coloring book. You just give your kids 10 crayons to, for the 10 digits, and these 200 pages introduce kids to every basic number fact. And what we're seeing now, it's being used in schools in Texas, California, and Nevada, and some Arizona. And what we're seeing is, is that teachers are learning as they're going through this. We take some of this for granted, but teachers and parents are learning just as much as the kids because we all learned math the old way of memorizing stuff. So this is called the Human Calculator Matrix. For a summer reading program, if you have kids, please consider getting this and just giving them 10 crayons and letting them do this coloring book over the summer to reintroduce numbers in a new way to them. Uh, if you go to my website, there's a lot of free videos and stuff you can watch on YouTube to learn how to do arithmetic. Uh, but before I go there, this is what I call chapter zero. It's the missing chapter. And I think every, every kid, every school needs to experience this matrix. It'll teach all of us how to speak the language of numbers and understand them. And now our teachers who are training so hard could teach our kids math, but right now we're just memorizing math facts and it really doesn't create any logic or foundation. And I just want to make a point, this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and if we could, can we just celebrate all of our teachers and give them a big hand? God bless them for what they do. It's, uh, it's, it, it's awesome to go to schools, Mark, and you've seen my show. I go in and I do shows for kids. We're gonna do something at Mesa Community College and other schools in the local area when I come back. Um, all the kids are having fun and all the teachers are on the outside. And I always watch the teachers during my show because I see teachers reacting more than the kids sometimes because these teachers are teaching our kids elementary school. They have to teach all the subjects, not just math. Math is their worst subject usually. So this is where I think we have our biggest problem. All these schools, these elementary schools have these teachers that are teaching our kids elementary math that aren't good at math. These, these people are teaching spelling and reading and other things, but their worst subject is math. So we have them in the worst situation, the worst time in front of our kids. And so I think there's a lot of little things we can do in education to change that. Uh, I'm the sponsor of uh, the, our tour this year is Tab Tour. Everybody got a card if you take a look at it. Um, there's room on here after the show. If you'd like, you can write down your birthday. And I'm also a human calendar, so I can calculate what day of the week that you were born on. So, sir, what's your birth date? Uh, April 26, 1984. April 26, 1994? 84. Hey, I was going to say, dude, what? 84. You were, born on a two, uh, you were born on a Thursday. Do you remember that? About 3.30. <laughs> all right? So you check it. Uh, <laughs> You like 3.30? Can you say, yeah, all right, yeah, good. Definitely 3.30. I had to go um, 3.40. So our sponsor's Tab Tour. This is the card from them. You, you come up afterwards, and I'll autograph it and write down your birthday, and I'll tell you what day of the week you were born on, or if you want to do your kid or whatever. But if you use this card, uh, there's, a, there's a button on my website, humancalculator.com, and when you hit it, you get two free weeks of Tab Tour. Tab Tour is a new app that's a tablet tutor. It's a tutor on a tablet. If you have a tablet at home and your kids are using it, they can do all their math homework on their tablet, offline, online, it doesn't matter, anytime, anywhere. They have a tutor that's always keeping track of them. It syncs up with the teacher in the school. The parents don't have to sign homework, have to check the answers or anything like that. There's a tutor available to the kids. They can hit a button and raise their hand. They can ask questions. There's videos. It's gonna revolutionize the relationship kids have about learning math in the classroom. It supplements the teacher, and it really is gonna make it easier for parents to be a part of the equation. So I'm just asking everybody, check it out. Pick a kid in your life. Give them two free weeks of a tablet tutor on tab tour and see how much of a difference it makes. We have schools across America now that are adopting this because we all know teachers can't do everything. So this is like having a teacher next to your kid in class every day and knows them because they keep, we keep track of a matrix of all their activities. So 
That's, that's the most exciting thing for me now, is I really think this app's going to change education. Awesome. A couple of quick things. We'd like to thank um, Schmidt Westergaard for all the free calculators that people have out there. Thanks, wait, Schmidt wait, Westergaard. Wait, what? Yeah. What? Why do you need a calculator? <laughs> because you can only be one place at a time. Okay, yeah, you're right. The pocket calculator. I get it, I get it. Okay, yeah, go ahead. What else? And then the other one is a uh, question from uh, Leslie. Says, what, would, what advice would you give to someone struggling with math? Yeah, yeah the, there's a couple things. Number one is um, if you use this Tab Tour app, a lot of kids get B's and C's each year. And parents are happy, teachers get paid, so everybody keeps moving along. But those kids are missing 20, 30, 40% of the material. And after a couple of years, that adds up and creates a lot of gaps in their learning. And so there's no one teacher that could fill in all those gaps. So what we did on Tab Tour is it's not, age, or it's not uh, grade based, it's skill based. So if your kid's in fourth grade, but they still think like a second grader when it comes to math, we're going to be able to find all those gaps and fill them in for you and make it easier for the teacher to uh, give the kid a chance to understand arithmetic. Uh, my number one thing is don't memorize your math facts. This is, what's seven plus seven? No math. Your kids are not doing any math in their head when you teach them to memorize their math facts. Let them count things. Let them use logic, anything other than memorizing. It's the worst way to go, and yet it's our crutch. It's how we start. Every kid in America and a lot of kids around the world is by memorizing their math facts. It's the worst possible way. And so my product, The Matrix, will take, get rid of that. They don't need to memorize their math facts because it's logical. It's patterns, and that's what numbers and math really is, too. Uh, quick comment. This is from Kelly, says, I'd love to have you visit my children's school, uh, Navarrete Elementary in Chandler. Yes. You, how, how, do, how do these schools track you down? How do they get you? Yeah, uh, my website is humancalculator.com. If you go there, there's a button there you can hit to send in a school request, and it's all based on zip codes. When I get to an area, we visit as many schools as we can in each area. Sally did a great job helping us, trying to get some more schools for Mason when we're back in Nick, uh, for the next school season. But I would ask all of you, you know, we're coming into a summer break, and there's a lot of kids that are going to take a couple months off, that you don't have a television and don't have any of those distractions. Imagine if your kids just spent 15 minutes a day on their tablet reviewing the math that they've learned. And for gifted kids, they can go forward as fast as they want. For the kids that are having trouble, they can slow down and take their time and do it at their pace, which allows them to learn at a more effective rate. But right now, when you got 25 kids in a classroom and we're all trying to keep them all at the same speed, that's a very difficult, challenging job for a teacher because you're gonna have five slow kids, five fast kids, and 15 kids in the middle. It's really hard to teach to all those different dynamics. So having a supplemental tool really makes it easier for everybody. Question is, uh, what do you think about Common Core math? Is it a good learning tool? Yeah, Common Core is getting us away from this memorization. It's teaching algorithms, it's teaching number sense, and things like that. We got a lot of problems. Uh, when we were growing up, there was a thing called New Math. Do you remember New Math? Hmm. That screwed everything up because the teachers didn't know what it was, the parents didn't know what it was, the kids are sitting there going, who's teaching me what? So there's a big curve there. It took years for everybody to get caught up and trained properly and for parents to understand it. We're going to go through that same gap now with Common Core. A lot of teachers are just getting trained on it, just starting to implement it in the classroom, so they're just learning about it. Parents don't know what it is and the kids don't know what it is. So it's going to take a transition of time before that really settles in and we start to see impact and results on that. And uh, I, out of all the responses I got from my last appearance on, on the show of Mason Morning Live, um, something I said at the end of the show that really got a lot of feedback, I got a lot of feedback from it, I want to say again today is that at the end of my show when I visit schools, I tell the kids that you might not be a, a, a rocket scientist, but you're going to need numbers the rest of your life and not to be afraid of numbers. And there's one thing they can start doing today that makes their life better, is I ask all kids that I meet to do three things to make their life better. Save 10% of your money, give 10% of your money, and invest 10% of your money. And it seems so simple, yet if we all look back at our lives, if we'd all saved 10% from the time we were 10 years old, how much of a difference would it have made in our lives, in our families' lives. And so I try really hard to get these kids to understand that start saving now because the most powerful force on the planet Earth is compound interest. And we don't even teach kids what that is. Do you guys know what the rule of 72 is? It's the rule of 72. When kids hear that, all of a sudden a, a, something happens in their brain. But if you don't know what it is, if you, if you put $1,000 in a bank account and it's making uh, it's over, or let's say 5%, okay? How, much, how long does it take for your money to double? Does anybody know? Take a guess. 5%, how long before your money doubles? 14.4 14. years, the rule of 72, thank you. Uh, whatever the interest rate is, divide that into 72, and that's the number of years it takes for your money to double. So if you're making 10%, 10 into 72 is 7.2 years. So just 
it's information that makes you realize, it motivates you hopefully to put money in the bank and let time be on your side. And I think we need to teach that to our kids now more than ever. Uh, you know, because kids walk out of school and not only do they not understand money, but they have to go borrow a bunch of money to go to college and they wake up four years later in debt, $200,000, and they still can't do math. So we've got to change that equation. Man. Something's wrong. It's not adding up. <laughs> well, I, I got to say this. One of Scott's best friends is Mike Rowe. You know who Mike Rowe is? The dirty jobs guy? And now Mike, he's on CNN. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's where a lot of people know. Dirty jobs, yeah. What an amazing, if you want to see some great TED Talks, uh, look at what Mike Rowe talks about, what you're just talking about. All these kids that are going to college and borrowing up $200,000, they get out and they can't find work. Um, that's a whole other thing. But, but Scott and Mike are very tight buddies, and boy, they both offer a really unique uh, look at, what, what, quite frankly, what's wrong with the country. I, I, I'm not the guy that knows all the answers, but all I can say is I look at the world new, through numbers, through math. And nothing is adding up. The, the fact that we have a million homeless people in, in the most powerful country in the world, that we have thousands of homeless students. I just left Las Vegas. They have 3,000 kids that live on the streets, and somehow they end up going to school. How can we allow this to continue in America? So I really hope we have an attitude adjustment and, and start making a difference in our people. The, the fact, there's a million vets that are homeless. I, I used to serve. And... To see all these guys on the street and girls on the streets that don't have anything now, and we don't do anything about that, breaks my heart on a daily basis. So we've got to make a difference. We've got to change that. Here's an observation. The, this is from John McCall. He says, the sum of the digits on the reverse diagonal is another pattern on the matrix. That's correct. Yeah, all the numbers that add up to 9 uh, go through the matrix diagonally. If you look at the top right, you see the number 9. And start going down through the middle of the matrix, you'll see 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, all the numbers that add up to 9. When the kids are coloring this in, they are jumping up and down because they're discovering patterns. You're not, the teachers aren't telling them what to look for. The kids can just see it because the colors make it all come to life. So out of everything I've done, I've invented a new calendar. We don't have time today, but it was, it was going to save us from Y2K, but that didn't work out. Uh, you know, but it will catch on. Before Y3K comes, somebody's going to fix it. Uh, but this matrix is the coolest thing I've ever come up with. So if you're going to take any time to th about what I've shared with you today, please share this matrix with one kid in your life and just sit there and watch what happens. I think it's the missing link in math, and it's going to make everybody a lot better with numbers. So I think the best advice I ever got from Scott was um, don't be afraid of math. You know, there's a math phobia. You say math, and you can almost see people, they vapor lock. <laughs> they can, I, I can't do it. Have a little bit of fun with it. Teach your kids, your grandkids. Uh, I, I think when Scott was young, you told me this once, or, or I dreamt it. Um, <laughs> your mom used to take you grocery shopping. That's right. That's how this started. My, uh, my mom saw that I was good at numbers. And we had uh, eight kids in the house, and we had a small budget. So she said, okay, we got 150 bucks. You keep track of everything as we put it in the cart, and tell me when we're at 150. And... <laughs> And I would keep track of taxes and everything, and I would, I would tell my mom, you know, 149.24, and I would always leave enough to get a candy bar. You know, I was taking care of myself. <laughs> Selfish ego thing. And, uh, but that's when I realized, because I would do this, and my dad was showing off one day, and he wrote out 149.24 on the check before they started ringing it up. And the manager said, what are you doing? And my dad said, well, my son can keep track of the stuff we put in the car. And he goes, no, he can't. There's taxable, non-taxable, all these things. I goes, yeah, I got it. And, uh, and he goes, uh, and they ring it up, and it's 149.24. And, and the look on that manager's face made me realize that maybe I'm an alien. Maybe something <laughs> is wrong. You know, something's up. So. <laughs> that, that is awesome. Yeah. You know, if, there were a whole, if the world was full of guys like you, we wouldn't have to do that. Just yeah, you. you know, Oprah had me race a scanning cash register, and out of all the shows I've done, that was the most stress I ever had because the, the girl was really good. She's like, boop, 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 you know, <laughs> and all I could read was the numbers flashing on the screen, so that was the most scary moment. When I said the answer, I was, I, it was probably the first time I said the answer, I was 100%. I was <laughs> hoping that I was right. It worked out right, so that worked out great. <laughs> Another piece of advice that I think, quit, quit telling your kids to give 110%, because that's not possible. It's, it's mathematically silly. <laughs> I knew that would drive them yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I knew that would drive them crazy. I had to put that in the... <laughs> well, Scott, uh, man, this is cool. Uh, truly, we could, we could talk to him all day. It's, it's an amazing thing. His mind, there's something weird going on there. It works different than ours, but, but, but boy, you've really stumbled on some really cool stuff. Thanks so much for coming by. Thank you, Mesa. Uh, thank you so much thanks. for coming home. Sally, thank you. It's